the object. There are two types of objects in English, the direct object and the indirect object. First, the direct object. The symbol is O, D, capital O, small d. Now, the direct object is the person or thing directly affected by the action of a verb. We take the examples. The child lost her ball. What did the child lose? She lost her ball. The child lost what? Her ball. Her ball is directly affected by the action of the verb to lose. We take the second example in the same way. John invited his friends. How can I find the direct object? First, I look at the verb, which is always transitive. John invited whom? He invited his friends. His friends is the direct object. It is directly affected by the action of inviting. The third example, the lion killed the man. The lion killed whom? The man. So the man is the direct object. It is directly affected by the action of killing. I saw mom and dad. I saw whom? Mom and dad. So mom and dad, it is compound here, is the direct object. Finally, we invited all our friends. We invited whom? All our friends. So all our friends is the direct object. In all these examples, the verb is transitive. Now to find the direct object, first find the verb, then ask whom or what after it. The second type of object is the indirect object. Let's take an example. Mother told her children the story. We notice here in this sentence that there is a direct object first. The mother told what? The mother told the story. So the story is the direct object. This means that the indirect object is always used with the direct object. They go together. We have two objects in the sentence. We return. Mother told her children the story. The mother in this sentence told the story to someone. So the one who receives the action of telling the story is her children. This is called the indirect object. So we go to the definition. The indirect object, OI, capital O, small i, is an animate being. It means a human being or an animal which is the receiver of the action. In other words, the person to whom or for whom the action is done. And there is always a direct object with the indirect object in the sentence. I return to my sentence. Mother told her children the story. Mother told what? The story. To whom? Who received the action of telling the story? Her children. Right. We can say also, uh, mother told the story to her children. It means we reverse the position of the direct and the indirect objects, and this is correct. Now, her children is always the indirect object, even if we change its position. We take another example. The coach gave Melissa another chance. Let's try to find the direct object and the indirect object. The direct object is the person or thing which is directly affected by the action. We can find it by asking who or what after the verb. And the indirect object is the receiver of the action. Let's try to apply this on the example. The coach gave what? 
the coach gave an another chance. Another chance is the direct object. To whom? To Melissa. So Melissa is the indirect object. The sentence can be said in another way. The coach gave another chance to Melissa. So in this case, when we put the direct object before the indirect object, we are obliged to use two. And sometimes we use four. Two or four. Some verbs are used with two and others are used with four. The third example. Mary bought Fred a sandwich. Mary bought what? She bought a sandwich. So a sandwich is the direct object. For whom? For Fred. Fred is the receiver of the action. Fred is the indirect object. So Mary bought a sandwich for Fred. Mary bought a sandwich, direct object, for Fred, indirect object. The last example, Paul gave it to her. Paul gave it to her. Here, the direct object is uh, it, and the indirect object is uh, her. In this case, we cannot reverse because we are using a pronoun. Now we summarize uh, the sentences which contain an indirect object. Firstly, have a transitive verb. And secondly, they have a direct object. We can never speak about an indirect object without a direct object. They always go together. We have a subject plus a verb plus the first object, then the second object. You see in this table the verbs which are used with two and those which are used with four. For instance, we take bring, to bring something to someone, to give something to someone, to hand something to someone, and so on. The verbs which are used with for, to book, the verb to book means to reserve, to book a room, for instance, in a hotel, to book a room for someone, to build a house for someone, to buy something for someone, and so on.